And welcome back to About Tonight. Hello. How are you? Are you well? That's good. Uh, my name is Michael Hing, and I am joined on my right uh, by Jack Druce and Greg Larson, who, I, who are currently eating hot dogs in uh, competition. Gentlemen, how are you feeling? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, these are real good. Pretty yeah? good. Can you just, are you, are you, like, just try, all right? Just put a, bit of, put a bit of jazz on it for TV, all right? Well, I'm loving these hot dogs. Thing. Thank you. The sponsors need you to, mm. okay. <clears throat> what sponsors? It's fine, we'll do it in the end. Um, and, and, and Jack, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Um, I feel like you guys are going through them quicker than I expected you to, so we may need to get some more later. Are you licking a plate? <laughs> oh my goodness, you are a monster. I just want the fucking car. All right, well let's introduce our next guest, shall we? Uh, you would know her uh, from her music mm. criticism, from Channel 31 stuff that she has done, and uh, from her very funny Twitter profile. Uh, please, ladies like and gentlemen, round of applause and welcome to the stage, Clem Basto! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the show. You're welcome. Uh, now, when uh, because this is community television, um, when they oh. said Clem would, would like to do the show, I was like, that's fantastic. Um, but we obviously don't have sort of producers and, 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 and researchers here uh, in the way that you, you, know, you might right. like a bigger show. Um, and so I had to stalk all of your social media accounts pretty thoroughly in order to have some questions uh, to chat to you about. And uh, the first thing I saw was that you've recently been in uh, the Tinseltown. Yes. The Hollywood. The, the Hollywood. Los Angeles, the city of angels. And uh, what were you doing over there? Ah, I went over for a bunch of reasons. I went over to uh, be an entertainment journalist. Hello. But also to... Do you mean, when you say entertainment journalist, do you mean like a like a Richard Wilkins type uh, celebrity gossip yeah, type person? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, yeah. okay. And you're, you're a big fan of... Of the celebrity gossip? Oh, I love Richard Wilkins' work. Right, okay. um, <laughs> Richard actually gave me a lava lamp last year. Interesting. That's This is now what the interview is about. <laughs> Why did he do that? I was doing a really stupid real-time art project where I was living in the 70s um, <laughs> for a year. And uh, I went on the Today Show. And after the show, Richard... Some some lackey came up to me and said, "Richard has a gift for you," and it was a he lava lamp. He didn't even lamp. give it to you himself. No, he sent someone. Else. He, he went. Sent... He went to his his office to get this lava lamp. This was in his. So it wasn't like he didn't send someone home. This is a thing he had in no, his professional it was office. No, it was a Liberation Records Temper Trap branded <laughs> blue lava lamp. And you, do you still have it to this day? I do. Did he sign it or anything? No. Do you think that? Do you think Richard Wilkins' ownership of that? And I don't know the man personally, but do you think that his ownership of that lava lamp increases or decreases the value of that lava lamp? I'd say increases. Increases. Yeah. Um, so what, what else were you doing over in LA? You were there uh, to be a celebrity journalist? Well, that was my work. Uh, the reason I went is uh, I am a screenwriter in my spare time mm -hmm. and I wanted to try and crack the screenwriting industry, oh. which is a very original reason to move to LA. That's a fantastic reason to, to, uh, to, to move to LA. Uh, did you have the big idea? You were just going to go over there and look for inspiration? Uh, I was already working on a couple of things, yeah, and I thought I'd go over and hit some contests. So given and... that you are a professional screenwriter, someone who, <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, like, I am a Writers Guild member. Yeah, yes. certainly, certainly more professional than this guy over here. Right. Uh, can I? Can I pitch what? in? Can I? What? No, it's not about. Just eat the fucking dogs. I'm writing friendship on this one. This isn't about you, right? No, but I feel like you just Clem's here. Can I have a sauce sandwich? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you get what do you want? Right? Mustard? Just mustard. sauce. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> sauce. I just sandwich. wanted this to work. How it's going to work. This Are you writing the name? Oh, this is the, <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. Yeah, it's pretty good. What, because of that or because of this? Because of that? <gasps> they wrote Clem in it. Oh, I could have done that if you want. It's probably wrecked now. Oh. But sorry, I put the thing on the top. It said Clem. Nah, it's just good that Jack your mates are supporting you on this show. Yeah, it's good. Up on this. All right, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. I'm willing. I'm willing to go halves with you on this because I feel like you bring you bring the professionalism and the ability to this. But I've got the initial. All right. I'm just making sure no one can hear me eating at home. <laughs> it's fantastic. I've got that's very professional of you to do that to come mm -hmm. out. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Um, Mike technique. Yeah, I uh, have. So here's my idea, right? Yep. It's a horror film. Okay. Uh, scary type of film. It's a zombie film, right? But they're not zombies. What they are is is actually they're space spiders, right? And what it is is you're. It, 
so w when you get bitten, right, yep. the virus is actually spider eggs and they go inside you into your bloodstream and they reproduce and then, then there's just spiders living inside your body and they slowly eat away all your organs and then you're just a sack of spiders walking around and then when you bite someone, they put those eggs in you, in the next person and that's how the zombies get and it's called spider egg zombies. Mm. We'll work on the title. Sounds great. Uh, your thoughts professionally on that as an idea? It sounds like an absolute winner based on the quality of the films that get released these days. <laughs> oh, well, that seems like more of a, a comment on Hollywood than on... That's fine. Mm. Uh, Lee, I know you're a big... Are you drinking <laughs> my water? Well, that, that, that's... Yep. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Lee, I know you're a big fan of, uh, of, of Clem's work. Uh, is there a, a thing you maybe wanted to ask? Yeah, it, when you went to LA, did you go to Medieval Times? The no, <laughs> no, I wanted to. Ah. Um, I did That's... go to Comic Con dressed in ostensibly medieval clothes. So. Oh wow! Really? Mm. What was the? Uh, what was the? <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> 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 just put <putting> so much <laughs> I'm having fun now. I feel like I'm, I'm I don't like have fun. I'm like, have you awesome eaten all those? You're down to one. I've got one left, man. Well, two left. Huh? All right. I've got really bad bread teeth. Bread teeth? Yeah. What's bread teeth? You've know, got white bread, like, stuck around the bottom of your teeth. I did not know that was a thing. Well, it is. Oh, this is more professional than I'm learning. Mm. Mike was vegan, so he doesn't eat bread. That's... Oh. I am, but that's not how veganism works. I don't... So, can I... Uh, this, is, this, is, this is my... I'm going to nail this question. This, this is a question that I learned from an interviewer in America about how to interview people well. This is gonna, this is gonna be a great question. I'm ready. Um, moving to LA is a big, that, 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 that is a big step in anyone's career. And I think it's the dream of a lot of people and it's a very daunting thing. I certainly myself would not be confident enough to ever go over there and try and make it in a, in a scary place like, like the United States of America. Uh, <laughs> not a joke. Uh, oh, I, thought, I thought you were finished. No, it's, you, you'll notice there's a question because there'll be an upward intonation at the end, all right? Just look for that. It's an upward inflect. Like, it, can you tell me how did are you eat? Oh God, this Sorry. is. If oh, it's gonna be fine. It's calm, blue. If how, what did you expect? What like what, what were your expectations going in there and your fears? And how did your like experience while you were over there differentiate from those fears and your expectations? Oh man. I don't think I really thought it through. I left. I had eight hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I had eight hundred dollars in the bank, um, and I just left. There were a lot of people I didn't tell I was going. I told my family. Um, Coward. I don't know what my expectations were. Probably winning an Oscar instantly. Fantastic. Like most people writing screenplays. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. The reality was quite different. Um, <laughs> dating in America was interesting. Oh, you went over there. Did you did you go over there with the intention of finding love? Well, I thought I would date American style while I was there. What does that what does that mean? Because I'm also um, terrified of that as well. I feel like everybody's much more cool with online dating over there. Oh. Uh, Whereas over here, it's a it's a taboo. Well, everyone's very busy in LA. Oh, I see. Uh, but I had some great experiences. There was one guy who messaged me and he was really upbeat and smiling. He said, I just have to know before we talk, do you have big muscular calves? Like, please let me know. Needs to know. And I said, I'm really sorry I don't. And he was like, no, you have a great day. I just looked at your calves then as though I could see and, I, and as though I could like make a judgment about your calves from that. And I, I just, if, if the camera picked that up, I apologize. Not, it's not a thing that I would usually do, but I was intrigued because I wasn't sure if you were going to say you did or you didn't have big muscular calves. No, you, said, you said you didn't. No, because I don't. Um, How and, do you know you don't? Like, who knows what their calves uh, are? Like, I, think, I think he meant like, like our crumb woman, like <laughs> you like could crush someone's strength. head. Yeah. Right. And right, do you think that was it? What are you? Just getting a selfie. I just feel like you're really getting on board with this claim in a way that is derailing what I Yes. I'm so sorry. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool. I'm just happy you guys are here. Uh, so, uh, muscular calves, mm. you don't think you have them. It was a disappointment. He didn't message you back. No, he didn't. Um, eventually, I decided that it would be a good idea to try and have sex with Russell Brand because uh, he went to a similar yoga studio to me. So. I went and did Kundalini yoga, which is is the most awful thing in the world. Russell Brand is quite famously a, uh, a recovering sex addict. Isn't yeah. He? Yeah. And so did you? So I thought I was in with a chance. Yeah. I mean, were you in with a chance? Or were you just trying to enable him and his addiction in a way that you know? I'd say it was probably all yeah. of the all yeah. of the above. Right. <laughs> and how did it, how did that go? It didn't go very well at all. Did you um, did you meet Mr. Brand? Did you stalk him? Did no. You... I went to the same yoga studio as him for just one session and, and I was so angry when I got out of there. Uh, but I thought... <laughs> that is not the usual reaction to yoga. Well, I thought maybe that was endeavor. some sort of 
that was part of it, that maybe that was the barrier to enlightenment was, was being really mad. And I went back to my normal, like grandma lying on the ground with a blanket on yoga class. And I was sort of tiptoeing around it because I didn't want to upset my yoga teacher in case. In case they were like, well, I can I, smell I that other instructor that to be really on you. Offensive. And I said, oh, so I went to Kundalini yoga and she just went, I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> I went, I just heard screaming in my head. So then I knew it was okay that I hadn't reached enlightenment and nor had sex with Russell Brand. But it was a it was a great time for so, two years. So not from two in mm. terms of the <laughs> in terms of the And no yoga. Oscar. And no, and no Oscar. And no muscular calves. Oh that is very disappointing. Yeah. Uh, but you've written all of these uh, experiences into a show. Yeah. I, uh, that I'm deftly segueing towards now. Uh, and you'll be performing that from Wednesday the 25th of March through to Tuesday the uh, 7th of April at Bar Open. Yes. And April the 13th to the 19th. Uh, at the Imperial as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Yes, as part of Comedy Festival. We're very uh, excited. We have a director this time. So <laughs> <laughs> the words that most commonly came up in our very good reviews were things like shambolic and chaotic. So we're hoping that, <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping that Eric can just take it to an, another... I'm going to be honest, I would not know what that's like being described as shambolic or chaotic. No, <laughs> I, I can't imagine a, that at all. A bastion of profession. Yeah. More meat. Yeah. Don't applaud. Look at that meat juice. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, goodness. Uh, so we're going to need to find some more meat. Uh, mm. But before we do that, uh, the last thing we do Ooh. in the segment is just thank the wonderful Clem Basto. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And uh, we're going to take a break and we'll get some more meat back for these guys. See you soon. <laughs>